Hi, and welcome to the video on deploying Veeam Backup for AWS. Before we begin the actual deployment, we need to take a minute to familiarize ourselves with the product. This includes understanding the deployment types, uh, the requirements of the software, IAM roles used for security, and more. Uh, the best point of reference for this material is the Help Center guide. You can find this guide on helpcenter.beam.com. So let's dive right in. As you can see, the, the overview page here gives you kind of an overview of what Veeam Backup for AWS is. The Getting Started page provides the necessary steps uh, that you would take during a deployment, including installing Veeam Backup for AWS, which are the, the method that we're going to use for deploying today. So in case you get stuck during this, this video, you can always come back to this and have the step-by-step -step instructions. But before we deploy it, we need to actually understand a couple of things. What are the accounts uh, that are going to be used, IAM roles and such, as well as what are the components of the backup infrastructure of uh, Veeam Backup for AWS. And as you can see, there's four main components here. There's the Veeam Backup for AWS server itself, which deploys as an EC2 instance. This is the, the core component of the uh, backup infrastructure. This is where you log into and perform um, all your policy changes and your management and your file restoration and uh, restoration activities. Then you have EC2 instances. These are the instances that you want to protect. You have S3 repositories. This is a repository where uh, you want to keep uh, backups for longer periods of time. So you can keep, uh, you can use it as a target for the Veeam backups. And then you have worker instances. Worker instances are lightweight Linux uh, EC2 instances that are deployed uh, anytime that we need to work with data. So what does that mean? Well, let's click on worker instances here. And then you can see right down here that there's a list of, of operations where we deploy uh, workers. So whenever we create image level backups uh, in S3 repositories or we're restoring backup data, um, as you can see, we're, we're saying that we deploy these, uh, Veeam Backup for AWS deploys one worker instance per EC2 instance specified in a backup policy or a restoration task. And it's automatically selected, it's automatically deployed. And whenever that job or, or that task is completed, we get rid of that worker. So it's not sitting there running a occurring cost or anything like that. But it's important to note that, you know, this is when workers are being deployed and how they're being deployed. So familiarize yourself with this and this will help elim eliminate any potential issues moving forward. So now that we know what, you know, what the components are, the backup server, worker instances and such, we need to go back up here to the top and click on requirements because it's very important to know, you know, which ports that we need to have open, where and how they uh, should communicate to each other. So if we take a look at this network port setting here, we can see that for whatever local machine or wherever we want to manage this instance from, we need to have uh, from the web browser to the backup server and the worker instance, we need to have these ports open. And then these are what the ports are used for as well as from the backup server instance itself and the worker instance need to have these ports open. So it's important to note these down and, and understand these because this is where a lot of issues can arise because there may be uh, ports closed between security groups if, if uh, your backup instance is in one security group and your worker instance is in another and maybe port 9999 isn't open um, and that can you know impede your file level restores. So it's helpful to kind of understand this. Um, it'll help potentially uh, mitigate any issues that you may run into. As well as understanding the IAM role permissions. So by default, when Veeam uh, for backup for AWS is being deployed, there is an IAM role that's, that's created automatically. But you can go in and create other IAM roles or add your own, which is uh, preferred. And we have a listing here for the different IAM role types that show all of the necessary uh, permissions to add to that account. So we give you the permissions and the instructions on how to do it. We'll actually create one as part of this demo video. 
but it's helpful to, uh, again, it's helpful to understand that those are there. And lastly, the AWS services. So you can see the backup infrastructure components, the backup server and the worker instances must have outbound internet access to these AWS services. So it's very important to note that, um, that the backup server and the worker instances need to be able to talk to these AWS services. So they need uh, internet access, outbound internet access. Now let's take a look at a couple of uh, deployment models. Um, now that we know what the components are and what services they need to be able to talk to. So if we look at this first deployment model, it's, it's a model where the Veeam backup for AWS instance is deployed inside of the same account where the production instances are located. What that means is that Veeam backup for AWS and all of its components, the workers, the repository bucket and everything, are all deployed inside of the same AWS account and are protecting EC2 instances that are running inside of that same account. This is typically what we see for a smaller environment a, a test environment, a demo environment, and things like that. The next account or another model is one like this, where you have a dedicated AWS account that is uh, the Veeam backup for AWS uh, instances deployed in there. All of the roles, the workers, the S3 bucket and such are all deployed inside of a dedicated account. This backup account is then protecting it EC2 instances running inside of other production accounts. We then leverage a IAM role with permissions to be able to protect these EC2 instances. This is a, a and this deployment is, is more recommended or is recommended because um, the safety aspect of it. So all of your backup data is, is segmented away from your production data and this would be uh, recommended in most use cases. So now that we have an understanding of, of the components, the deployment models, and some of the features of, of uh, Veeam Backup for AWS, let's dive right into the uh, deployment. First thing we need to do is head over to the AWS Marketplace. So if we go to www.aws.amazon.com forward slash marketplace, all right, the first thing we need to do is search for Veeam. And this gives us all the options for deployment. So you can see that there's three versions. For this demo, I'm gonna choose the free version, but you can choose the version that you wanna deploy because the deployment is uh, similar across all of them. First thing you need to do, uh, no matter which version you choose, is click continue to subscribe. You can read the EULA and then click Accept Terms. This will begin the subscription process. Once it's complete, it will have a, a date down there and then we'll be able to continue. And now that's complete, we can click Continue to Configuration. I'm going to leave these settings as default. Uh, the latest version is automatically chosen for you. I'm going to choose whatever region I want to deploy into. Same for you. Click Continue to Launch. For the Choose Action on the Launch section, you want to choose Launch Cloud Formation. Once that's chosen, click Launch. You're going to leave all these settings as default and then click Next. On the stack detail screen, we've got some information here that we need to fill out. So first is going to be the stack name. Uh, it's important to note that this will also be the name of the instance that gets deployed. So I'm going to call mine Veeam Backup. The next thing is the instance configuration. So I'm, this is selected by default. Most of the settings here that are selected by default, you should leave. So this is the recommended size. I'm going to leave that as is. I need to select my key period within my environment. Select the one that's in your environment that you know you have access to. These three settings are set to true. I'm going to leave them that way. These are uh, lifecycle rules that protect the Veeam backup for AWS instance. 
The next settings down here are your network settings. These are going to be important, so we'll, we'll talk about uh, these for a second. Um, since I'm going to be connecting over the internet, I selected mine to have true here for an elastic IP. Um, it may or may not be that way in your environment. So it's again, it's important to understand the networking aspect of it. So if I take a look back at, at my presentation, in this instance, or how I'm actually connecting, I'm out here on the internet. So I'm going to be connecting over the, uh, over the internet to my instance right here to be able to, you know, set it up and configure it. So which ports do I need to have open, you know, to allow me to connect into there? So if I go back to the requirements, I need to have ports 443 and 22 open from, you know, my machine, the web browser to the backup server and the worker instance. So going back to this cloud stack, this is where all this is happening. So as you can see, um, we have one for SSH and we have one for uh, 443, so HTTPS. So I need to go in and now add my personal IP address. This is my public IP address so that I can connect to that instance. Your, your IP address may be different. If you have a, a situation where your internal network is on there and you want to just connect from your internal network, then you could put your internal subnet on there as well. Just remember everything has to be in CIDR format. Once you get that set, you'll choose your VPC setting whichever VPC you want this to reside in, and then whichever subnet you want it to reside in. When you've got those selected, click Next. All of these I'm going to leave as default. Click Next. And now on the review side, you can scroll all the way to the bottom, click that you acknowledge, and then we're going to click Create Stack. And now, as you can see, we have a process that's running. It's going out and it's installing all the components of being backup for AWS and creating all that. So what we'll do is we'll let this run. And as soon as this completes, it'll say create complete, just like this one down here. So whenever this says create complete, we're ready to move on to the next, uh, next step. So let's give that some time. As you can see, it's now completed. If we log into our EC2 portal, let me do a refresh. We can now see that our Veeam backup server has been deployed and it's initializing. So that's great. It also got a public IP because I set mine to have an elastic IP. And if we check the rules, you can see that it added the rules with two, two, uh, port 22 and 443 coming from my IP address. So everything was good to go there. The last thing that we need to do in this step is to connect to it and do the initial configuration. So I'm going to copy this. I need to open up a blank page. Actually go to that page. Click Advanced, click Accept. That's just due to the self-signed certificate. First thing we need to do is accept the EULA, and then click on Accept. If I go back over here, I can copy my instance ID. Go back, paste it in there. And now I can create a admin account or a username. So I'm going to call it, let's call it demo admin. I'm going to create a password. You can create whatever admin account and password you would like, and then click create. And that's it. You've now uh, deployed Veeam Backup for AWS. You're ready to log in and begin the uh, configuration aspect. Good job.